We have here a map of how the electricity flows to feed the overdrive solenoid in your car. We have the ignition switch, we all know how those work. Power goes into it when the switch is set, ready to go. Power runs to various things in the car. Amongst those, the overdrive off on switch in your cockpit. This is very simple, it's located on your shifter, or on your dashboard, maybe on your steering column. And this is the switch that you turn off and on to turn your overdrive off and on. And most cars, the next step would be this switch over here. But some cars have another switch in them. This is called a throttle linkage switch. And this is kind of interesting. When you're driving along and you've got your foot on the gas pedal, the throttle linkage is in a certain range. And that allows this is to stay closed, lets the flow go through to the next step. But if you decide to push on the gas a little bit to pass a truck or climb a hill, what will happen is this will break the circuit, will come out of overdrive, and the effect is the same as downshifting. So you'll downshift by just giving it some more gas, she'll climb the hill, pass the truck, and as soon as the throttle switch becomes back again, we go right back into overdrive. All of these systems have the last switch, which is the transmission interlock switch. Very simple, all this does is that we only want the overdrive to function when we're in a specific gear. In most of these cars, it's only in fourth gear. So when I'm in fourth gear, this switch allows the current to flow and keep going to the solenoid. Some of these cars also allowed it to operate in fourth and third, and in a very few, it operated in fourth, third, and second. And finally, the electricity gets to the solenoid. We have one right here. This is what they look like. Now, what does it do? Well, I've got some electricity here. Let's see if we can see it operate. I'm going to give it some power. I'm going to connect up some ground right here. And watch carefully. I'm going to give her a little power now. That's it. Power off. Power on. Power off. And she just operates that simply. It only moves a little bit and does its job. Now, once in a while, we're going to have a problem with this system and we're going to be looking for a failure. When that happens, I like to start at the end of the system. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but there's a reason for that. What I want to do is I want to go over here to where my solenoid is located. I'm going to take my voltmeter with me or my test light. I'm going to connect the ground somewhere close to where this grounds to the body of the transmission. And I'm going to take my probe, my other lead from my meter, and I'm going to put a safety pin or something similar into it. And what I want to do is I want to poke through the vinyl of this right here to see if I'm getting current to this point. If I am, <clears throat> if I've got current to here, all this is good. I don't have to worry about it. If I don't have current from here, I have to go looking for it. Before we start looking, I would recommend that you would take your coil and disconnect the small wires from both sides of it. We don't want electricity running through the coil because we're going to have the key on. So we turn the ignition switch on. Is power coming out of the switch and heading to the overdrive? If it is, go to the next place. Go to the overdrive switch inside your cockpit. Is it getting power? Good. You turn the switch on. Does power go out? Good. We go to the transmission or the throttle linkage switch if you've got one. Is power getting to it? Good. Is power coming out of it? Good. We go to the transmission interlock. Power going in? Power going out? Fine. If we have power going in and it's not getting over here, somewhere in here we're going to have a break. It won't be hard to find and then we'll be able to take care of it. Now, I know this is a pain to go from one to the other to the other to the other to the other. This works. You will be guaranteed to find the problem and fix it. And we'll take care of it. Now, what happens if we know the solenoid is getting power, but it doesn't function? We'll cover that in our next video.